Hello, and welcome to Pathways for Parents. I'm Cindy Milner, and today we're talking about dual language learners, and I have some special guests. Mucho gusto. Hi, welcome. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. having so us. I have Lori Davidson and Tom Carroll. Thank you for joining us today. You're welcome. You have a special place in my heart for music and <laughs> language. You. And so this is our third time meeting today. Hey, yes, we've had a busy day of performances. Yes, we were in Southwick this morning and Wilbraham this afternoon and here today and then tonight again in Back to Wilbraham. <laughs> so a big variety of families. So tell us a little bit about yourselves. Well, I was bilingual first grade teacher for a number of years in the late 90s. And um, that was when we were doing a two-way program in Chelsea outside Boston. So it was a program based on... Um, dual language instead of transitional and we had groups of children English native English speakers and native Spanish speakers that were grouped together integrated in one classroom and they would spend a week in the English classroom and then that whole group would move to the Spanish classroom and have a week with me in the Spanish classroom while the the other groups so there are two groups per, per, per grade would flip-flop so a week in Spanish week in English learning together with a little bit of time separated for some native um, literacy instruction and wow. so I did that for about five years and found that my favorite part of the day was when I would sing with the kids. And whatever I had to sing and whatever I had to teach in Spanish to this very mixed age of um, language abilities was easier if I sang. Mm -hmm. So I both used lots of traditional songs and found songs in Spanish and then invented a lot. If I needed to teach about the heart for the science curriculum, I would invent a song that had all of the main concepts that we just sang it. And so that was the most joyful part of my day and it fe felt like the most effective, that mm -hmm. the kids could grab onto that because it was attached to music. Absolutely. Music is so powerful for learning. Yep. So, um, so then when we, had, when we had our own children mm -hmm. um, and the classroom, I was trying to parent in the classroom, the full-time option wasn't as um, viable for me. I thought, how can I also use this, this part of the music that I love and do something kind of more flexible timing? Right. And so I started a program that was for parents and children and, and young parents, uh, young, not young parents, young children, um, ages zero to five with their oh. parents. And we would sing and um, play games all in Spanish and use puppets and scarves and different props. And now parents were bilingual or not? By, uh, I had a very, almost like my classroom, I had an integrated group. So I had parents who were fully bilingual and raising their children bilingually. I had parents who had no language experience and who were, um, who were trying to expose their children. And I had everything in between, parents who'd had a little high school or college Spanish but didn't really get it, and then ones who desperately wanted to reintroduce the language because their parents, the grandparents spoke it and it had been lost and they wanted their children to have that connection. Absolutely. So really everything all together, all for different reasons. And that is great. Reasons. And the outcome was? What was the outcome? The outcome was... They enjoyed their they, hour with they you? They enjoyed their hour with me. <laughs> they took the songs with them. Yes. Good. They sang them at home. So the, the little 45 minute class with me yep. is a great start. Mm -hmm. But it's really what they do at home. So I would give the parents a, a CD of songs nice. and they would play it in the car and play it at home all week and the kids would sing and they would work with that mm -hmm. and come back and it just started to really be woven into their, into their day and into their routine. I love that. And Tom, how did you become the pair of Mucho Gusto? Well, my history was in solo performance and I have been a musician for over 30 years, 35 years now. And I was making my living as a full-time musician and happened to be married to Lori. <laughs> <laughs> she was a, te was a teacher and then when our son was born, we started taking our son to performances, local performances of, of music in the libraries and we said, we could do this. And uh, with Lori's background in, 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 in language and then my musical background, we, we, we put it together and it seemed to work really well and the kids seem to like it so they do <laughs> seem like a natural fit so do i so how about if we listen to a few of your songs we'd love that great all right we'll see you in a minute one two three four five six seven eight and nine and ten i'm counting on you to count with me one two three four Five, six, seven, eight, and nine, and ten. Let's do it in 
Spanish now. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. Yo cuento contigo para contar conmigo. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. Yo cuento contigo para contar conmigo. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. Siete, ocho, nueve, diez. We're all a family under one sky. We're a family under one sky. We're all Sky, we're a family under one sky. Try the sign with me. We're people. We're people. We're animals. We're animals. We're flowers. We're flowers. And birds in flight. And birds in flight. Somos gente. Somos gente. Animales. Animales. Las flores. We're all a family under one sky. We're a family under one sky. We're all a family under one sky. We're a family under one sky. We're mothers. We're fathers. We're fathers. We're fathers. We're sisters. We're all a family under one sky. We're a family under one sky. We're all a family under one sky. We're a family under one sky. Let's do a verse about things we might want to be when we grow up. Let's see. What do you want to be when you grow up? A teacher. How about a firefighter? A lot of a guitar player. And a guitar player. Here go. We're teachers. We're teachers. We're firefighters. We're firefighters. We're singers. We're singers. And guitarists too. And guitarists too. We're doctors. We're doctors. We're chefs. We're chefs. We're veterinarians. We're veterinarians. And parents too. And parents too. We're all under one sky, we're a family under one sky. We're all a family under one sky. We're a family under one sky. We're foot stompers, foot stompers. teeth jumpers, we're wigglers. We're sleepers. We're sleepers. And sneezers too. Ah, uh, too. We're all a family under one sky. We're a family under one sky. We're all a family under one sky. We're a family under one sky. We're all a family under one sky. We're a family under one sky. We're all a family under one sky. We're a family under one sky. So here we have our rooster, but this rooster is a Spanish-speaking rooster. So instead of saying cock a doodle doo he says kikiriki. So we'll say, vengan amigos, come friends, come see my beautiful farm. You can help the rooster say, kikiriki. Vengan a ver mi granja que es hermosa. Vengan a ver mi 
granja que es hermosa El gallo hace así Kikiriki El gallo hace así Kikiriki Oh, vengan amigos, vengan amigos, vengan amigos, vengan Vengan amigos, vengan amigos, vengan amigos, vengan And here we have our cerdito Our little pig, I'm just a little pig today The cerdito says oink oink, just like in English We'll do our cerdito, oink, oink, and then back to our gallo. Kikiriki. Vengan a ver mi granja, que es hermosa. Vengan a ver mi granja, que es hermosa. El cerdito hace así, oink, oink. El cerdito hace así, oink, oink. El gallo hace así, kikiriki. El gallo hace así, kikiriki. Oh, vengan amigos, vengan amigos. And we have our tortuga, our tortuga, when she's ready to say hello, she pops her head out and says, hola, 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 and you can make a tortuga with your thumb and your hand, you poke your little head out and say, hola, 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 here we go with our tortuga. Vengan a ver mi granja que es hermosa, vengan a ver mi granja que es hermosa. La tortuga hace así, hola, hola, la tortuga hace así, hola, hola. El cerdito hace así, uink, uink, el cerdito hace así, uink, uink. El gallo hace así, kikiriki, el gallo hace así, kikiriki. So what does mucho gusto mean? Mucho gusto is pleased to meet you or a lot of pleasure. So it's what you say when you introduce yourself. Very nice. My name's Lori, mucho gusto. Mucho gusto. And it also is a, a lot of pleasure. So it's an introduction to language in a pleasurable way. Very, I love the way you put that title together. Yes, that's great. Um, we are talking a little bit about how do we bring this into the home? And you shared a little bit with us about how you started and singing songs with the parents and the kids and making it a regular routine. Um, putting the CD on, kind of making it so that you're doing it in the car, it's becoming fun. Uh, any other ideas? Um, well, I sometimes people choose a part of the day, mm -hmm. even when they don't have, so sometimes people in my classes don't actually have a strong background in the Spanish, but they want to do as much as they can yeah. with their child. And so my suggestion is to take a part of the day that, and just say, let's make dinner time or breakfast time or bedtime a, a routine. Let's make that always in Spanish and learn the vocabulary around that and the structures and, and make some routine. Yep. Or it's every time we visit the farm, we name all the animals in Spanish and we talk about what we're seeing outside on our walks at the park. And then you can gradually increase as you get comfortable or you can keep it at this is our special language time. And what I love about that is that the parent will learn the words as well as the children. So the parents that are not speaking another language um, will find it easier to, to do it with a child. Right, yeah. right. And my personal experience with that is that I'm not a native Spanish speaker, but I had always loved Spanish. I traveled in Spain. That was my, my junior year abroad. Yeah. And then as I became a bilingual teacher and had gotten my master's in bilingual ed, I still didn't feel like it was my, you know, my, my heart, my emotional language. So even though I had this whole background in bilingual ed, when our son was born, I spoke to him in English. I, I read some books. I sang some songs. Yep. But I still felt it wasn't my, you know, it wasn't the, I wasn't perfect. I was, I had great fluency. I'd gotten my master's, but it wasn't as, as ideal as, you know, as fluent as my English. And so I thought, well, I, if I'm not going to do it perfectly, I shouldn't do it. Oh. Then, but I, I'm going to just disagree with that completely <laughs> in my learning because that was, that was my young, naive, oh. even having studied all of this, right. when it came to my own family, I felt awkward with it. But I had started Mucho Gusto right before our second son was born. And I had parents who were coming 45 minutes, driving 45 minutes to an hour, wow. to sing for 45 minutes with their 11-month-old. Oh. And I thought, they're paying money, and they're traveling, and they're putting all of this effort in because they don't have the skills, so they're coming out to, to get them. Yeah. 
and I'm not doing this at home. <laughs> Something's wrong with this. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm selling, this is the way to go, but I'm not doing it with my own child. So when our second son was born, I spoke exclusively with him in wow. Spanish until about age five. And, um, and Tom, Tom sings beautiful harmonies in Spanish, but doesn't speak Spanish, except for the words Could that have, have fooled me. Except for yeah. the words that have become, <laughs> he's part really good songs. at mimicking accents. <laughs> except for the words that have become part of our family culture. They're words we yeah. never say in English because it just, the concept, it, it just exists in, that in language. Little, little ants when they're invading our kitchen are always hormiguitas. <laughs> they're, they're never ants. And papilla is always our morning porridge, never oatmeal or porridge. They're just fun. words. So, um, that's so he fun. would he would speak with the kids in English and I would speak in Spanish and they would hear me speak to him in English and then with our daughter I did the same thing. Yeah. And our oldest son who's yeah. 15 now it's pretty amazing that even though he is not a fluent speaker his comprehension is is really good just yeah. from speaking those early years in his life. Absolutely. He understands what Lori's saying. Absolutely. And he he kind of, he caught on to what we were doing because when Alexander, our middle son, was born, he said, somebody was speaking to him, and he said, oh, you have to, you have to say it this way, he's a Spanish baby. <laughs> so he had already gotten that there was this different code that we were using to speak, and so he was, he was getting that as well. Oh, that's very fun, <laughs> very fun. I speak to parents who have dual languages very often, and I myself speak two languages, and yet very difficult to bring it into the home and make it consistent. Um, so, like you said, make a special time. And any more about that that you'd share? I think any, any routines that are built around it, so it just becomes the language, and, and especially emotional pieces, if it's bedtime, mm -hmm. there's always a story <laughs> and a song, or talking about brushing your teeth and getting into your pajamas mm -hmm. and taking a bath. You can name all the parts of the body you're washing, yeah. so you can get more language like that or you can make it breakfast time and getting dressed in all of those morning routines. How about or... the person that is, um, let's say English is their um, second language and they have a native language and they're a little confused what do they do with the baby and their spouse or other uh, significant partner is not that speaking that language. What would you say then? A lot of people use the one parent, one, one language model. Tell so, me more. So the spouse, who is a native English speaker, would speak English with the children. And the, the um, mother or father, who's the, the other language, um, would, would use that. And then they would, the children would see the parents interacting together in whichever language. It might be both or mm -hmm. it might be one or the other. But they would have a, a consistent model in right. one language and the other. Yeah, I love that. Um, that parents are also concerned about the child getting them mixed up. And that happens. But what would you say? It, it happens, but kids are brilliant at yeah. knowing their audience. So you can have a two-year-old who understands. So code switching is when you're going yeah. back and forth from languages. And a two-year-old can identify when code switching is not going to be an effective form of communication and, and what language they need to speak to, to get their their point across. across. Yeah. And when they actually can have an enhanced communication by using code switching. So if a child or an adult knows they're speaking to a fully bilingual person, then they know they can choose as they're speaking those languages because each language gives you something that the other can't. Right. Sometimes that perfect word doesn't exist. Like you said, in the other, can't. Right. In the, in the other language yeah. or it's just more beautiful or it's more emotional in right. that and you can throw that in and know that you have an audience that gets that. Right. And then you can turn that off and only speak one language. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. That's that, me. Yeah. That's but, me. <laughs> Speaking to my cousins, it's like, okay, I start here and then switch, because there's a better word, and then go back to their right. language. So. Right, so kids, so, so there might be a little mixing, but kids, they, they sort it out. They, they do. do. And, and if we're living in this country, then the English is gonna happen. Right. The English is, is gonna happen, so the language, the second language, or, or the primary, like the, the home language, mm -hmm. the, the non-English language, is the one that has to be more protected. Mm -hmm. So that's the one, so if you're a native Arabic speaker, if your kids are going to school, they're gonna get the English. They're gonna get the English from the whole community. Everything else will yeah. be English. If you don't protect that Arabic, the kids aren't gonna get that right. outside the home. Right. You know, the, the opportunities are few and far between. Absolutely. So whatever you can do to hold on to that, your children will never say, 
we wish our parents hadn't spoken Arabic to us. Yeah. It, our life is worse for it. There, it's always the other. I wish my mom, my mom knew Spanish, yeah. my grandmother knew French, but they didn't speak it with me. They were yeah. too much in a hurry to learn English, and so they let that go. Right. Many families that I work with also come from different cultures of different countries, and some of them are, are, um, are under a lot of uh, turmoil. And families will come and say, I only want them to speak English. I only want them to speak English. And I try to convince them that keeping their native language, whether it's in reading a book or conversation or singing, is so important. Well, because the culture is embedded in that language. Yeah. And at some point, even, even if they're coming from a place of turmoil and, and are, have, have come to this country in, yeah. a, in a tough spot, there's still that connection and that connection that goes through the generations. And that that culture is inside that language. Mm -hmm. And so losing the language, you've lost a connection right. to the culture. And at some point, the kids are gonna want that. Right. Because they're gonna to wanna to know where they came from. Right, yep, exactly. And music is a way, so these songs, some of the songs we sing, they're sung all over the Spanish-speaking world. And kids, English, native English speakers that take some of my classes, who get these songs in their heads, and mm -hmm. they're some of the traditional ones, you know, uh, uh, um, like an old McDonald type that we sang in the Vengan Amigos the, in Spanish, or a Ring Around the Rosy, something like that. But in Spanish, Que Llueva is one, Bring the Rain. They'll be just kind of singing that out on the playground, and they'll make connections with a native Spanish-speaking oh, family because the ears will perk it. up. And yes. they'll say, how do you, how do you know that? That's Wait, this true. is ours. Yeah. Right. That's and true. I, have, um, I have grandparents who've come to my classes and because with with their um, their children and because I'm singing some traditional songs say like, I haven't heard that song since I was a little girl in Mexico or yeah that but it, it touches a deep a deep is. place and I love that family song that the two of you did oh that's beautiful. that's a Ruth Pelham song it and is it's beautiful. beautiful song and if only I could keep up with all yeah. the sign language well we, we work a lot into that song and it's a song it's a good example of being able to use a song and then extend it to a lot of different things. Sometimes we do verses about the seasons or mm. occupations. Or and the people emotions. that see us on a regular basis, they know the the, the basic signing right. that we do. But when we add on to it, whether it be seasons or occupations or right. flowers, uh, then they, and we as well, learned new for signs nice. for, for those particular yeah. things. I love that. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I like that. <laughs> oh, right. the this dog. is the one for dog. <laughs> oh, you're calling the dog. So many makes so much sense. That is great. Yeah. That is great. So then you're getting, so if we do dog, we're saying dog and in the next verse perro. But at, for both of those, we're doing this yep. and we're bow wowing. So you're getting all of these pieces that are saying this is what a dog is and often we'll have a puppet. And so you're getting a visual, a visual image, a sound that you're associating mm -hmm. and then the label yep. for, for each. That is great. And that's how children learn. Really multi-sensory. They have to see it, they have to hear it, maybe feel it. Move um, their bodies. Move their get bodies, into their yeah, it ingrains into the body. That's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Some people are visual. Visual, some people are auditory. Right, right. We all learn differently. We do. I'm glad you pointed that out. <laughs> I have a little guy um, that the, they're actually twins, twin boys. They're really little. They're about uh, maybe 18, 19 months now. And they, their mother is not a Spanish speaker. But a friend taught them a song, and they do the hand movements, <laughs> and they sing the, at 18 months, That's the both languages, and, yep. and the signs, which is a wonderful thing. Well, and that, that brings up some parents say, well, when should we start? Yeah. Now. Right. Now. I was going to ask you that, Now, too. and there's no, yes. there's no waiting for something to get established. There's no reason just, to wait. Just, no. Just now. No. And at birth. I mean, yep. it really, you don't have to wait for some golden, Absolutely. golden age. The golden age is at birth, or if you didn't start then, now. That's right. <laughs> Yep, so here's, here's a book that we give to our families that come to welcome baby. That's a and beautiful one. So this is, it both, I have it both in English and in Spanish. And this book really um, guides the families through the early songs, early, early songs. Right, I, I looked at that earlier and the, all, that has many of the traditional so ones. Tell me, tell me one, because I can't read Spanish. So this is, <laughs> this is about the little chicks. So it's Los Pollitos Dicen. Pio, 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 cuando tienen hambre, cuando tienen frío. So the little chicks are saying pio, 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 because they're hungry and cold. Oh, yep. And then the mama looks for their wheat and corn and brings them dinner, keeps them warm. That is and great. And then they sleep under her wings yep. the next day. And what I love about this book is that it not only gives them the parents who may not have remembered these early childhood songs, 
or, or poems or whatnot, but it also gives them the words, but it tells them all again how important it is to talk to their little ones and to talk and sing with their baby. Um, and it has great pictures. Mm. So this, this next one, I believe it's about a cat. It is. <laughs> the cat has four paws. One, two, three, four. <laughs> See? Very simple, yep. but yet but yet great and it, the explanations and the pictures are, and the pictures are it's sweet. It's easy to make the connections. Yeah. Children can make the connections. Right. Many times I say to families, pick up a book and even if you don't know what the book is, um, look at the pictures. Say it in your home language because mm -hmm. you know many books, I've tried finding books in other languages and it's a little difficult. But Spanish is, is pretty easy. It's, it's um, very available. But pick up a book Say the words in your home language. Yep. Make, Make up a story. Up. Right. Make it up based upon the pictures. Yep, these are great. Um, here's a whole variety of books, which I brought just because mm. I love the fact that we can expose kids to other cultures, even through you know beautiful books like this. Um, this Barbara Curley. Oh, that's Barbara Curley and the the yep National Geographics. They talk about other cultures, and we can always express so much, even by some simple pictures. Mm. How fun, how fun is that, right? I love that. And then this other one is my favorite, same by the same author, Barbara Curley, One World, One Day. Mm. And it shows kids around the world going to school, how they get ready in the morning. And, mm. and we just talked about how do we start our day. And if you start mm. your day regularly with a second language, how beautiful is that? And then and then to follow this through. It's a great series. Um, and the books that, here's the one that you were just talking about. Right, the rooster saying, ki 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 Again, I don't often read Spanish, but I can get the picture. <laughs> I get the words. So this was great. Uh, anything else you want to add to this? I, I, I was just going to yeah. show my... Um... Jose Luis Orozco is one of my favorite Spanish um, children's music artists. And these two, mm -hmm. De Colores and Diez Deditos, are widely available in the library system. Perfect. And um, just the, the folk art is beautiful. So it has the songs. And they come with discs oh. that are also available in the library. And I guess that, that's one thing parents sometimes, if, they're, if money is not available for buying books, that the library is such a great resource and, and librarians can help order things that might not be available yes. in, in local libraries right. to come through the whole state. Right. So if you're looking for a particular language, they can help. That's They great. can help with that. Yes. Um, the other thing that one of the libraries does is they have an English language learner program, many of the libraries, where you can log on and you hear the la native language and the, the speaking of mm. the language. So it's a nice, really, beginning, too. If you don't know where to begin, begin at the library. Exactly. Right? Yeah. That's great. Always. We spend a lot of time at libraries and love them all. That is great. Exactly. Yeah. So anything else you'd like to say? Anything else? No, nope. I have no, something I to say. Actually, yeah. I have one, I have oh, one good, thing, which good, is good. I think with the music is that you don't, I mean, we have, you know, we have our puppets and yes. our props, and Tom has the guitar. But you can do it with none of that. Mm -hmm. So if you if you have one song, you can sing that in the car, on the bus, in the bathtub, in the uh, in the bed, at the doctor's office, yeah. waiting. So all you need, you don't even have to have a great voice. Right. Just sing the song. Don't right. don't don't wait for you know all the all the right things to right. to happen. Like me, Frere Jaca. Right. That's about it. Right. And you can and, and you can play with the song. You can use the melody and put your own words to it. Yeah, and, nice. and kids will do that as yes. well. Yes. So. I, I had, uh, my grandmother was living with me from Canada when, when she was elderly and ill, and I had daycare kids. And they would just love to come and show her, and she'd talk to them in French, and even though they didn't understand, they really engaged. They really, and she loved watching them sing and play. So incorporate those grandparents with, Absolutely. with the language. Yep. That's great. I appreciate yeah. you coming. Mucho. Gracias. <laughs> Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. I'm trying. That's good. <laughs> and that's all Very the parents good. need to know. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Muchas they, gracias. Yes. A ti. So thank you. Thank you very much for thank having you. us. Thank you. Thank you for being with Pathways for Parents today. I'm Cindy Milner, and have, we'll see you next time.